Welcome to part two of the introduction to beginning Acrobat JavaScript. In this section, we'll cover how JavaScript is used in Acrobat. In part one, we learned that JavaScript is a general purpose programming language that's designed specifically for integrating into an application. When forms functionality was added to PDF, it was also necessary to add some kind of scripting to handle calculations and other basic forms functionality. Adobe could have created their own scripting language that was unique to Acrobat, but Creating a programming language, even a simple one, is an enormous amount of work. It made much more sense to use the newly created JavaScript language from Netscape. This gave Acrobat the scripting power of a full featured programming language without the burden of creating and maintaining it. As it turns out, this was a brilliant decision. JavaScript has become enormously popular and is used in all kinds of applications. While the specifics are different between applications, like Acrobat and a web browser, the fact that both use the same core JavaScript language makes it easy for developers to move from scripting in one application to scripting in another. In Acrobat, scripting is so useful that with every new version, Adobe added more and more ways in which scripting can be used. This rich and diverse scripting environment is great for making the most of PDF in Acrobat, but there is a minor downside, which is that the scripting environment can be a bit confusing. Don't let this bother you. The Document Object Model, or DOM, is the set of application-specific objects that connect core JavaScript to the application. In Acrobat 3, the DOM was very simple. Only seven objects, and it was focused mainly on forms. But of course, scripting is useful for all kinds of things, and by Acrobat 7, there were over 75 objects that covered a large range of Acrobat and PDF functionality. And it continues to grow today with every new version of Acrobat. But all this growth comes with some issues, mainly version incompatibility. To use newer functionality, all your users have to have a newer version of Acrobat. Basically, you write scripts to target the lowest version you expect your audience to have. Occasionally, Adobe also changes how existing functionality works, usually for security reasons. This means, for example, that a script written in Acrobat 6 might not work in Acrobat 7 or later. This isn't a big issue. These kinds of changes typically affect only a small subset of full JavaScript functionality, but it's something to be aware of. Scripting in Acrobat breaks down into two major areas, automation and document interactivity. Automation scripts are used to increase productivity by automating repetitive or time-consuming tasks, or by applying the same operation to multiple documents. These scripts live on the user's system and are associated with the Acrobat application not with any PDF file. Automation scripts are activated through custom toolbar buttons, menu items, or through a batch process. Scripts for controlling interactive or dynamic document features live inside the PDF file and are activated through PDF events like pushing a button or entering text into a form. These two areas of scripting are conceptually different, but there's no hard line between them. Both use many of the same DOM objects and scripts can be written that combine concepts from both areas. So, what specifically can we do with scripting in Acrobat? The number one use is, of course, for forms. Performing calculations, formatting and validating data entered into fields, resetting and submitting forms. But there are also many other uses that are not specifically related to forms, such as displaying alerts to the user, navigating within a document, displaying any number of specialized user interface items like menus and pop-up boxes, and for creating visual effects like changing the background color of a form field, plus many other types of actions, just about anything you might want an interactive document to do. In the area of automation, there are functions for opening and saving PDF files, creating new PDFs, inserting metadata, adding document features such as form fields, bookmarks, and watermarks, we can also split and merge PDFs, insert pages from other PDFs, rearrange and remove pages. There are many features for manipulating and processing PDFs. JavaScript can also execute the existing Acrobat menu items. This allows us to access some functionality that's not available to JavaScript or to shortcut some tedious or repetitive tasks. There are some areas of Acrobat functionality that can only be accessed with JavaScript. There's no user interface for these. For example, scripts can communicate with web services and access local databases. If a PDF is displayed in a browser, a script in the PDF can even trade messages with a script on the HTML page. 
Scripting also gives us finer and more dynamic control over some PDF and Acrobat features that do have a built-in user interface, like the multimedia player, full screen mode, and content layers. So, what can't we do with Acrobat JavaScript? Remember, JavaScript communicates with Acrobat through the set of DOM objects. So if the developers at Adobe haven't written an object to access a certain piece of Acrobat functionality, then JavaScript can't access that functionality either. However, most of the restrictions are security related. For example, PDFs can be downloaded from anywhere, so you wouldn't want a script on a random PDF file to be able to affect your system. Acrobat blocks scripts inside the PDF document from most file system operations and restricts them to non-destructive types of actions. Mostly these scripts can only operate on the document they are in. On the other hand, to be useful, automation scripts need some level of system access and to be able to do potentially destructive things like deleting pages. So scripts on the user's system, which supposedly the user knows about, are granted special privileges not available to scripts inside of a document. Now, you are ready to move on to the next topic, setting up Acrobat for JavaScript development.